Hey. So hey there, I'm Kyla. Welcome to my channel. This is my Let's Appreciate podcast where I talk about things. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a little bit different. This is going, this is, <laughs> um, okay, so welcome to my, my work in progress podcast. Let's appreciate. I'm thinking through the name, I'm going to crowdsource. So if you have ideas on the name, please reach out and let me know because I was thinking through some stuff and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to call it. Not great at naming stuff, but am good at talking for long periods of time. So I think, you know, one, we got one, but not the other. <laughs> well, people were like, hey, Kyla, you should think about starting a podcast. And I was like, you know, I would love that. <laughs> so structure of the podcast. If you watch my YouTube videos, you know that I'll talk about stuff and then I tend to drift away and then I'll get back to the main subject. So this will have a topic. It's about AMC. I'm primarily going to be talking about AMC, what's going on with AMC, what does it mean? It's going to be less edited than my YouTube videos, less charts, etc. But I am going to link obviously to all my notes and all my sources in the description. So if you are more curious, you can go there, but this will be a longer, less edited version. And I, I do have a podcast. <laughs> if, you watch, if you watch my TikToks, you know that I, I do have a podcast mic that I tend to use for a prop more than I use for um, my actual podcasting. I have a podcast with my friend Mesh that will be releasing soon. That one is a lot more professional and it's a lot more scripted. This is just a chance for me to kind of talk through some stuff that I'm thinking about. So less edited, less scripted, and just basically a fun time to hang out. That's what a podcast is, right? <laughs> I, also my chair, I think I've talked about this before, but my chair is a little squeaky, so sorry. And my desk is too. So the two pieces of furniture that I do have are both squeaky. So <laughs> things are going well here. <laughs> Wanted to touch on AMC. I really don't even know where to begin because all this, so when all this started happening back in January, I actually made a PowerPoint about it for GameStop and kind of what happened with Robin Hood. I'll link that in the show notes too, but the whole thing was so, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around what's happening with AMC because it doesn't quite make sense to me. But I haven't been paying attention to AMC. AMC is one of the meme stocks. It's very heavily shorted by well, by some hedge funds. So Reddit got a hold of that and they were like, hey, let's squeeze out the hedge funds, similar to how they did in um, January with GME. And AMC was a part of that narrative then too, but was a lot more focused on GME. GME was like the hot ticket item. The whole thing with short selling is that the short sellers are going to borrow shares from a lender, sell them, and they intend to buy the stock back at a lower price. So they make the profit there. They make that differential. And with what Reddit wants to do is they want to push the price up. So the price that these people borrowed the shares at is going to be lower than any price that they can buy them back at. So they're like in the whole like there are a couple of squeezes that happen. So there's the short squeeze. So the hedge funds kind of get stuck in a position where it's like, okay, there's margin calls. So the short sellers have to buy back their stock at a higher price. And that those buybacks trigger more demand for the stock. And then the stock keeps on spiraling upwards and, and things just keep on going up and up and up. And then at that point you kind of get a gamma squeeze, whereas the value of the stock gets closer to the option strike price. Dealers will have to buy a lot of stock. Um, and so the option buying will result in the stock price going even higher. The hedging will result in the stock price going even higher. And so you just experience, again, that spiraling out of, of the stock price. And so that's basically what's happening with AMC to an extent. Like this one is a little bit less dramatic. Like I feel like what, with what happened with GME, like you had Chamath out there, you had Elon Musk tweeting Game Stonk. You had Dave Portnoy tweeting out, Robinhood got in a ton of trouble because their app shut down, which it shut down today um, because of the volatility and the movement. And it's just like, it's sort of that same narrative all over again, because when you have that volatility, you're going to require higher collateral and you have liquidity concerns. 
And so brokerages are just sort of like stuck, right? Like they can't just keep on, you know, issuing stuff if they don't have the liquidity on the other side to cover it. And so that was sort of the situation that they were in and the problem that, that went on there. Adam, the, the CEO, spoke out against the short selling attacks back in November of 2019. Like GameStop kind of like never wanted to be a part of this narrative, but the AMC CEO spoke out back in 2019, a while ago, about this. And then AMC was in a lot of trouble because of COVID, and basically they were probably going to have to declare bankruptcy. And in January, there was the first mini squeeze. The stock price jumped 310% overnight from $4 at the close to $20 at the open. AMC has a lot of money now. They're able to do things, they're able to fund stuff. So yeah, I mean, like it doesn't make sense to me how this is just purely retail. And obviously it's not, right? Like institutions are super smart and they're sniffing around and they're gonna take advantage of this sort of thing. But the sort of the narrative that people are developing on Wall Street bets, like, oh, this is us, like we are the apes, we are AMC. It, it yeah, from Wall Street bets put together this Google Doc that is talking about the path that AMC has went through. And it's called an educational timeline, and it has six main goals: provide a permanent, shareable point of historical reference, educate new and veteran apes, <laughs> uh, show how, why, when and how show why when how shorts and hedge funds are getting desperate prove that all happenings along the way are squarely in the apes favor and virtually guaranteeing the moon landing give existing apes the confidence to buy and hold more amc bananas give potential amc apes the confidence to become first-time investors in amc bananas and hold them soon some beaches. Oh, those <laughs> with Kung Fu Gorilla Grip. And most, most importantly, spread the word of God. I actually haven't seen the word of God. Oh, the Gorilla Grod. Huh. Okay. All right. All right. It's a gorilla figure. I think that so those five main goals, right? So historical point of reference. So this is like the Wikipedia for what's happening with AMC. Proving how things got to this point. Showing how the hedge funds are in a certain position. Talking about the path forward for AMC. And giving people the confidence to hold. And if they're not already invested, to invest. I mean, it's interesting. AMC has been around since 1920. The first multiplex was in Kansas City. They were the first theater to add cup holder armrest. Like, I mean, I think that's worth billions in shareholder value. But yeah, I mean, like, so AMC is two things, right? Like, so it's this meme stonk, and then it's also a e reopening trade. Like, people are going to want to go back to the movies. So it makes sense for it to catch a bid as, as we begin to reopen. But obviously, like, <laughs> doubling in one day. <laughs> I don't know about that. So, I mean, it's up 2,850% this year. Uh, GameStop, for comparison, is up 1,300%, for almost 1,400%. Uh, and, and somebody wrote a paper about how, in order for AMC to be very correctly valued, it, either its future revenues would have to drop by four times as high as they were, would have to increase, sorry, it would have to increase from four times as high as they were before the pandemic, which is, implausible, or the price would have to drop by 75%. And then, I mean, I so I talked about this in my TikTok, and I mentioned this paper, and people were like, evaluation isn't real. <laughs> and I was like, well, you don't, you don't need to call us out like that. <laughs> like, you don't need to. <laughs> um, ouch. <laughs> As someone who did build models, like, I'm personally offended. But it's true, it's true in this scenario. Like, yes, it, it's not. Valuation doesn't matter. Like you can look at Tesla, you can, you can see it with Tesla. Like valuation isn't important to these sorts of companies. And of course, of course, Matt Levine have a great piece on it and was talking about how it's, it's really 
you know, shareholder value at the end of the day is shareholder value. And whether that comes from, you know, equity bond issuances or offering free popcorn, it's still the same thing. Also the narrative that Dogecoin is a calculated effort by hedge funds to distract people from AMC which is interesting. Joe Weisenthal had a piece about, Joe from Bloomberg had a piece about how crypto and the meme stonks are basically the same thing, different narrative. And uh, it, it's sort of interesting how protective the Reddit group, and nothing against them, like I don't think anything's wrong with it, but how protective they are over what they're working with and i think it's really interesting to think about that in sort of this like collective belief driving the value of an asset like that's what i keep on coming back to it's always how like like <laughs> i was talking to somebody about this today and i think that we're all really lonely because of the pandemic i think that we're all feeling really lonely feeling really sad and there's a lot of trauma that a lot of us are just not addressing because we either don't know how or we don't have the means to, or it's just not something that's accessible. And I think what we see with AMC, what we're seeing with GME, I'm not saying that these people are, are lonely. <laughs> I'm just saying that that, I think it's people searching for community, searching for people to be something with. Because we've lost that. We've lost that throughout the pandemic. We've lost that over the years. Like, obviously, I, I don't know a lot, but I think that there's an issue that we just don't have the community that we used to. So people look for stuff online, like I'm a member of Fintwit. You know, like you, you become very attached to your online groups and your online friendships, which is totally fine because it's just like, you know, it's your online situation. Had a big fund come in and buy up some shares, Mudrick Capital, and then they turned around and sold them and they were like, this is overvalued. And still the share price went up by like 20%. And AMC is moving on mega volume, like $40 billion was traded today. So a lot of hands are moving within AMC um, and Eric tweeted about it. If you, if you zoom out as crazy as AMC was today, it wouldn't crack the top 10. All the spots are held by Tesla, including a $150 billion day when it was included in the SPY. Uh, that's also why AMC is trading more than Tesla for, and of course the top holders of AMC are Vanguard, BlackRock, like those passive institutional buyers. <laughs> There's a really good piece that somebody sent me. Where's the money going? AMC, basically the whole situation is like, what happens when you bail out companies with printed money? So kind of what the Fed has been doing with quantitative easing and how much liquidity there is in the market. Um, that's like a whole separate conversation about what we're seeing with the reverse repo situation and that almost reaching 500 billion and just the flush of cash that is on the exchanges. And so when you have a ton of, when you keep on bailing companies out, is what this article is talking about, passive investment grows larger and larger, corners the tradable float of these meme stocks. And so retail investors will sniff around and figure out where capital is misallocated. So if somebody's short and they'll step in. The thesis of this article is throw valuation out the window and just concentrate on whether the business model will capture the revenues of the future. That's the world that we're living in. With the revenues of the future, it's not going to be about valuation. A couple of different futures that we can have. One where it's the metaverse, where we're really leaning into technology, where we have healthcare figured out, where we're able to take better care of our health, health and ourselves because we have access to these digital tools or there's, you know, 50-50, right? Like there's the other situation, the other iteration of the future where we have too much technology, where we have too much information, where it's just overflowing and all of the sudden, you, all the digital apps in the world are not gonna be able to save us from ourselves. And I think I was talking to somebody about this today, like we are sort of in this and we have been for a long time, this extremist mindset where it's like, I have to go all in, or I can't, like you have the workaholic culture, which I'm a, like, I'm a part of that. You have, um, you know, the political extremists, you have religious extremists, like everybody's just sort of operating at these barbell extremes. 
And the issue with that, and the, the, Tom, my friend, was saying that we're operating at these financial extremes now, where where you do treat the market like a casino, where you do try to go all in, where you do try to like you know bet a buck to make a hundred, and. I don't know what it is, but it almost feels like a shift in psychology and maybe I'm like reading into it too much, but I think that I think that we have uh, you know, I'm I'm a part of I'm like a millennial. I'm 23, but the risk tolerance of this generation is very different. It's and I don't think that everybody trading AMC is is my age. I think that there's older people, younger people, whatever have you. But I think that there's been a shift in risk tolerance where, you know, our parents were able to go work for 40 years at a corporation and they were able to retire with their retirement in place and they were able to, you know, get a home and, and have a family and, and sort of just be able to like do that nine to five and be fine. And that's just really not the case. And I think that there's just so much resentment that's probably what it is. There's just so much resentment um, underneath the surface here. Like you have people who are just so mad at the system and so angry at all the you know injustices that they think that they've been through or they have been through. Like the question isn't, it's, it's not about AMC. It's not, it's, just, it's not. Like, yes, AMC is a movie theater. Yes, you can go and get your free popcorn if you go there. Yes, the CEO is going to take full advantage of the things that are going on. Yes, it's shorted by hedge funds. But if it wasn't AMC, it'd be a different stock. It'd be GameStop, right? Like, it'd be anything else, BlackBerry, um, any of them. It, it's not about the narrative of AMC. It's about everything else that AMC stands for. Um, so the fact that AMC was shortage by the hedge funds, the fact that AMC was um, kind of going through it, right? Like almost declaring bankruptcy, that is what matters. And the power of Reddit to give these people, give people a platform in order to, you know, drive this collective belief in an asset is extremely valuable. Like Reddit itself is adding, and Twitter too, like that adds billions of dollars in, in price movement beyond beyond probably what we can even fathom and and so it's it's a couple of different things like it's it's community which comes through reddit and then it's also this underlying resentment at a system that people feel like has wronged them or will wrong them and so the only way out of a system that you don't believe in is basically to gamble against it and the issue is when you think of a casino, which is what people are treating the stock market as right now, it's like, okay, I'll throw, I'll throw 10 bucks into AMC and see what happens. Like what? And I, okay. And I don't want to, I don't want to generalize here because I do know that there are people who do believe like, like this Reddit uh, due diligence, there are people who believe in AMC and, and have cared about the company. So I don't want to um, have people think that I don't think that they actually do care about the company. And um, Tracy Alloway had a good piece, of course, about how it's really, you know, people should allocate money to companies that they care about. And just because it's AMC doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Like, like so much has operated behind closed doors for so long. Like you've had to be an accredited investor, which is the stupidest thing. You've had to be, um, you, 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 there's been so many barriers to entry to these people and um, to me, like everybody. And so using AMC, using the meme stonks is like a way to break down that door. It's a way to say like, oh, retail is here, I think. You have the institutions like Mudrick coming out and saying like, oh, we think this is overvalued. Like we don't think that you should invest in this. So we're gonna flip our shares, forget about it. But then you have the Reddit investors who are like diamond hands, stay strong apes, um, smooth brain ape, like all that stuff, they're going to um, hang on to it. They're going to stay with it. They're going to keep on moving with it. And I think that this piece, you know, throw valuation out the window and just concentrate on whether the business model will capture the revenues of the future. So I have, my whole portfolio is really built around like the metaverse. <laughs> I'm super bullish on Roblox. I, I, if I, I'll do a video about that, but I have a piece on it too. Um, super bullish on Roblox, very bullish on the idea of us moving forward as an internet society. I think that one thing that we have that's like a weird thing about our society is that we like memes, like we memify everything. Um, we memify lumber, we memified 
uh, the Archegos thing. It was like everything almost, it's so surreal that you're able to draw memes around it. And I think that, you know, that's what AMC is. That's what the meme songs are, is you're able to attach a narrative to these things. And it doesn't have to be a narrative about how the company is going to, you know, produce a certain amount of free cash flow. And I, this was in my, my, my stock market as a fairy tale uh, piece. I kind of talked about that too, just like the power of narratives, the power of people saying things, the power of everybody deciding what's going to happen um, based on this collective belief behind the value of an asset. GameStop is uh, the highest valued company in the Russell. It's a value, it's a value stock, right? Um, the rotation trade is the meme trade, another Bloomberg piece. <laughs> AMC, a couple of the meme stocks were 25% of the volume today. The market cap of $33 billion is 70 times larger than where we started the year, and it's now above almost half the companies, in the S more than half the companies in the S&P 500. It's trading on massive amounts of volume. And it's not, it's not about does it make sense? It's about it's happening. And uh, do I think institutions are involved? Absolutely. And I think that's the one thing that bothers me about how this is being shaped out. Like, sure, like, sure, 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 it's retail investors. Like, yes, they're up there. They're, you know, they care about the companies. They're involved. Uh, they want to have a part in it. But at the end of the day, too, you also have the institutions stepping up and taking advantage of this. And so I think that's like the one thing that uh, maybe I, I don't understand it well enough, in, but that's the issue, right? Like how much of that is institutions? Because the whole narrative is like, okay, we need to get away from the institutions. We need to squeeze the hedge funds, but you're making money for people on the other side. So like, how does that work? I think things move really fast too. Like I think people are constantly, like now it was Jamie, now it's AMC and everything keeps on going forward and moving fast and you can hardly keep up. And even in the crypto space, it's like really what's happening? Like what's going on? Why is this happening? Who's in charge? And I don't think that we have any answers to that sort of thing. Maybe just giving people popcorn is the answer. Like maybe maybe this is a new model of share of ownership, like where you do have your three point two million retail. Like AMC is eighty percent retail. Like maybe this is the point where you do have your retail investors step in and and come to your shareholder meetings. Maybe that's what does happen. People are using the stock market as a way to find community. People are using it as a path to find other people who they don't even have to think like them, but just a tool for them to connect with other people. They're using, and, and that's that's why you see social investing apps, right? Like that's why you, that's why those are taking off because investing is scary, investing is lonely, investing is overwhelming. The stock market is weird. I spend most of my day thinking about the market and thinking about movements and most of my day because of that is spent about thinking about how other people are gonna think about that maybe not the smartest tactic I worked at my old company i was i did modeling i did a lot of modeling and i did a lot of research reports and that's what i used to write like even in college i would do equity research reports and i loved it i think it's i think valuation is fascinating and i do think it has a time and a place in the long run um and then once i left my company i was like oh yeah like i'll keep on you know doing models i love it and i i basically have stopped and i've just sort of been more focused on the news and and talking about like all the different movements and trying to explain to people like what this day-to-day -day fluctuation means even though you don't it's not that important in the long run but i do think it's important to understand like okay the fed released their beige book today how does that tie into the amc narrative well i mean you have wage issues you have a labor shortage and that ties into the amc narrative because where's the money going who is spending on what? People have a theory that people are going into crypto, going into uh, meme stonks and, and maybe quitting their jobs. But I, I think that's a small segment of the population. I, I, I haven't been able to really figure out why everybody is not working. You can go into really any restaurant and they'll be like, okay, we're hiring. Do you know anybody? We need help. 
And I think that's interesting too. So you have short, and I talked about this before, you have shortages in these things that you really, really need. AMC is a surplus. And because it's a surplus, it's driving uh, resources away from potential shortages. And I know that's like not a crystal perfect example, but that's the, the way that I would think about it. It's like, okay, so you have all this attention directed towards AMC where what about all the other stuff like okay so you have all these people who are able to drive the price of a stock upwards what does that mean for how we think about building portfolios what does that mean for strategy should everybody have exposure to meme stonks should everybody like do we stop caring about eco economic data and i think the answer is no because the beige book will impact like how the fed handles interest rates is going to impact stuff because it's all signaling. So if the Fed says, says hey, like we're going to raise rates, like watch out, uh, AMC is going to be impacted from that. Question would be like, well, where are the regulators, right? At the end of the day, like where's regulation? Where's the SEC? Where's Gary? And they, they just kind of miss the boat on all this stuff. They're just like two steps behind. It's sort of like what they're doing with crypto. They definitely see crypto as a threat. Uh, they're always just two steps behind. And then they're saying like, oh, investor protection, we've got to step in. And it's like, well, you, like, where was the framework for this? How, why didn't you think of this happening? And it's hard to, like, nobody could have pictured this happening. But I think that everybody's battling back and forth and saying like, oh, you know, this is wrong. You're wrong. Basically, AMC is driven by narratives. AMC is driven by the collective belief behind the value of an asset. And AMC is also because we crave community. Those are my three things. And okay, so like, I believe in building in public. <laughs> Not really, uh, but I, I'm trying to, I mean, this is an experiment, this podcast, uh, the Let's Appreciate podcast. And this was the Let's Appreciate podcast, uh, an experiment by Kyla Scanlon. <laughs> so if you did like it, uh, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up, subscribe uh, on, on Spotify and I, YouTube, however you're, choosing to listen and thank you for listening. Monday, I do a weekly market update and weekly market look ahead and also have a bunch of cool projects in the work it's there as well. And super glad that you tuned in and thank you for listening and I'll stop talking now. So, all right, bye.